and they were using an instrument called side scan sonar which sends out a beam down to the seabed there was a higher level of civilization perhaps much higher uh, than we've expected the underwater city of Dwarka is not just an archaeological site but a chapter from a saga that blends myth, legend and historical facts into one fascinating tale. Often linked to the legendary city mentioned in the Mahabharata, an ancient Indian epic, the exploration of Dwarka is a perfect example of how ancient texts can align with modern scientific discoveries in marine archaeology. Known in ancient Indian scriptures as the gateway to heaven, Dwarka's story is wrapped in deep mythological significance with a rich historical backdrop. It's mentioned across various texts, including the Mahabharata, Bhagavata Purana, Vishnu Purana and Harivamsa, where it's described as a city of magnificent scale and beauty, crafted by the divine architect Vishwakarma at Krishna's request. According to these texts, the city boasted 56,000 palaces made of crystal and silver, decked with emeralds and other precious stones, designed in six well-organized sectors with roads laid in grid patterns and enhanced with numerous reservoirs and gardens. As a bustling metropolis, Dwarka was a hub of profound Vedic learning, music, arts and literature, similar to the economic and cultural dynamism seen in ancient Athens. The city also holds a mythical status due to its association with Lord Krishna, revered as a deity, king, strategist and philosopher. This connection brought the city in almost divine repute, with Krishna's opulent palace shining bright, its walls inlaid with gold and precious stones, reminiscent of the mythical city of El Dorado. The city's dramatic end came after Krishna's departure, believed to have been submerged by the sea as a divine retribution by the sea god for the moral fall of its inhabitants, echoing the narrative of the biblical great flood intended to purge sin from the world. This cataclysmic event has rooted Dwarka in the collective memory as not only a symbol of prosperity and spiritual wisdom, an ideal society where material riches and spiritual enlightenment coexisted, but also as a cautionary tale of hubris. Archaeological findings over the years have only added layers to its mystique. Excavations and underwater studies have unearthed evidence of what many believe to be parts of the original majestic city. Stone anchors and remnants of potential public buildings or docks indicate a once thriving maritime trade comparable to that of ancient Carthage, renowned for its naval supremacy. Moreover, the story of Dwarka often draws parallels with the legend of Atlantis, another advanced civilization believed to have met its end submerged under the ocean. Both cities are depicted in their respective lore as victims of their societal ego and moral decay, powerful societies that fell from grace, serving as moral lessons that prosperity can often lead to downfall if not handled with care. The story of the discovery and exploration of the ancient city of Dwarka opens a fascinating chapter in the field of underwater archaeology in India, linking mythological tales to historical evidence through its rich findings. The initial intrigue around Dwarka began as far back as the 1930s, when local fishermen and residents near what is now the town of Dwarka in Gujarat stumbled upon ancient pottery and other remnants either on the seashore or entangled in their fishing nets. These casual discoveries sparked a keen interest among local historians and archaeologists, further fueled by community stories of a grand city that thrived before being swallowed by the sea, tales that have been linked to the legendary figure of Lord Krishna. The systematic exploration of these underwater ruins started much later in the 1960s, when Dr. S. R. Rao from the Archaeological Survey of India took charge of the project. Often likened to Heinrich Schliemann, who famously excavated Troy, Rao brought an interdisciplinary approach to the excavation at Dwarka. He combined traditional archaeology with underwater diving and marine geology, a methodology that was pioneering at the time, and set a new standard for underwater exploration globally. This extensive research led to the unearthing of a treasure trove of artifacts dating back to around 1500 BCE, indicative of a once thriving urban center. Among the findings were large stone structures and anchors, possibly used for docking ships. Various styles of pottery ranging from domestic pots to larger storage jars used in trade, and numerous beads made from semi-precious stones, pointing to a bustling hub for trade and ornament manufacturing. The archaeological pursuits in Dwarka gained new momentum in the 1980s under the aegis of the Marine Archaeology Unit of the National Institute of Oceanography, India. 
These pioneering efforts were groundbreaking, not only for Indian archaeology but for the study of submerged cities worldwide. The detailed mapping and artifact recovery conducted then laid the groundwork for the comprehensive understanding of Dwarka's extensive and multifaceted past, drawing a vivid picture of its historical and cultural panorama. This ongoing journey into the heart of India's submerged heritage continues to shed light on the sophisticated urban planning and vibrant cultural life of ancient Dwarka, bridging the gap between ancient scripts and the tangible past. Exploring the ancient city of Dwarka didn't come without its challenges. The dive sites were beset by strong underwater currents and often suffered from poor visibility, which made the archaeological work particularly difficult. However, Dr. S. R. Rao and his team were determined and adapted to these harsh conditions with remarkable resilience. They developed innovative underwater archaeology techniques that allowed for detailed mapping and careful recovery of artifacts, setting a high standard for future excavations. Every item brought up from the depths was meticulously documented and preserved, creating a methodical record that would aid not just in the study of Dwarka, but also serve as a valuable reference for other underwater archaeology projects across the globe. These practices refined during the Dwarka excavations have had a lasting impact on how submerged artifacts are handled worldwide. The story of Dwarka's rediscovery and study often draws parallels with the underwater exploration of Alexandria in Egypt. Both cities were key maritime centers in their time and provided a wealth of archaeological treasures that included massive stone structures hinting at sophisticated urban planning. The work in Alexandria, led by Frank Godio, mirrored Rao's efforts in many ways. Both teams used advanced diving and submersible technology to unravel the secrets of these ancient cities, pushing the boundaries of what could be achieved in underwater archaeology. Moreover, both cities hold places of deep cultural and historical significance in their respective mythologies, Dwarka as the city of Krishna and Alexandria for its pharaohs, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. These explorations not only shed light on the physical layouts of these once thriving metropolises, but also offered insights into their cultural and historical contexts, enriching our understanding of ancient civilizations. The success of these underwater excavations has also sparked a renaissance in marine archaeology and brought educational and cultural enrichment. The artifacts and the findings from Dwarka have been incorporated into academic curricula and are regularly featured in public exhibitions, showcasing the intricate nature of urban planning and the vibrant cultural life that once characterized ancient Indian civilizations. Diving deep into the chronology and historical context of Dwarka through rigorous dating and analysis of its ruins has opened up new perspectives on this ancient urban center. The use of various carbon dating techniques on artifacts and structural remains from the underwater site has been particularly revealing, setting a timeline that suggests the city's oldest structures might date back to around 2000 BCE. Interestingly, these findings indicate that parts of Dwarka were thriving during what could be considered the mature Harappan period, aligning it with other great civilizations of the time like those in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Excavations have shown the city's development through multiple layers of urban settlement. The oldest of these layers display signs of sophisticated city architecture with advanced urban planning and hydraulic engineering typical of the Harappan civilization. The layers that followed tell a story of gradual architectural evolution and cultural continuity, evident in the changing styles of pottery and city layouts, suggesting a long history of human habitation. However, the exact nature of how these findings correlate with descriptions in ancient scriptures like the Mahabharata has been a hot topic of debate. Some of the unearthed structures loosely match the grand descriptions found in these texts, but the extent of their resemblance is still under scrutiny. Scholars are divided. Some suggest the ruins might not belong to the single legendary city of Dwarka as described in the texts, but rather to a series of cities built and destroyed over various epochs. Further discussions among archaeologists emphasize the city's significant role as a maritime hub. The discovery of extensive fortifications and valuable artifacts suggests that Dwarka was a center for trade possibly connecting with other ancient civilizations across the Middle East and Africa. This is supported by findings like weights, measures and ceilings that indicate a well-organized trade system, akin to those observed in ancient Mesopotamian sites. Drawing parallels with other legendary cities like Troy adds another layer to our understanding. 
Both Dwarker and Troy occupy iconic statuses in their respective cultural mythologies and have been subjects of archaeological studies that blend myth with reality. While Troy's excavations revealed insights into ancient Greek and Trojan lifestyles, the studies in Dwarka have illuminated aspects of late Harappan and post-Harappan cultures in India. The architectural differences are also stark. Troy is known for its massive defensive walls, whereas Dwarka's ruins reflect a preference for sophisticated urban planning and effective water management systems, showcasing different priorities and environmental adaptations between the two.